What if I told you that you could cut your OpenAI bill in half? Yes, you heard that right. With OpenAI's batch API, you can achieve a remarkable 50% cost saving. But wait, there's a catch. Hold tight, I'll cover everything. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Vishal and today we'll be exploring this powerful cost-effective feature of OpenAI, which is the Batch API. Using OpenAI models is not cheap, especially if you're operating on scale. We'll examine the Batch API, we'll establish use cases and see how we can use Batch API with 50% less cost for the same tasks. Let's get started. Well, you would want to use OpenAI Batch API for its lower prices. Let's have a look at the pricing itself. So if you can see here, the GPT-4.0 model is priced at $2.5 per million input tokens. Whereas for Batch API, you are charged only $1.25 per million tokens. This is 50% cost savings. GPT-4.0 is an inference model. However, if you look at embedding models for embedding use cases, we can see here itself, the prices are 50% less for embedding models as well. So it makes sense to use Batch API for reduced cost. There is a catch though. It's crucial to note that Batch API does not provide real-time responses. Standard turnaround times are typically 24 hours, mostly lesser than that. This delay is an important consideration when evaluating the Batch API suitability for your specific project requirements. Batch processing jobs are often helpful in use cases like running evaluations, classifying large data sets, embedding content repositories. In fact, one of the coolest things about this batch API that it's perfect for embedding large data sets, like your entire product catalog, which is key if you are looking to build a robust semantic search engine. And if you are not familiar with semantic search using vector embeddings, you will want to catch my last video. I'll show you exactly how it's done. Link is in the description. Well, there are two ways to operate on Batch API. One is through the visual intuitive OpenAI dashboard, which is perfect for getting started. The other and where we'll really get into the details is using code directly, the programmatic approach. We'll going to cover both, but like any good tool, there are a few rules and things we need to take into account. So let's clarify those first before we dive into the how-tos. Let's establish use cases for our demonstration. I'll be demonstrating two use cases, but to get to that first, let's understand what is the sample data that I have prepared. I have a list of products, for example, a smartphone, Pro X, or a Bluetooth noise canceling headphones. Each product has product ID, name, description, price, availability, and category. For first use case, what I'll try to do is to evaluate whether the products are mapped correctly to their categories or not. And for the second use case, I will be embedding all of this data in case you would want to perform a semantic search on top of this. Now that we have established our use case, it's important to understand the file formats required. You need to batch all your requests in one file with extension called .json-l or json-lines. json-lines is a file format which is very similar to JSON, but it stores JSON objects one per line. Well, something like this. So you can see each line in this file is a valid JSON object. So we need to create a JSON L file, something like this, because that's what OpenAI understands as input to its batch API. So we had this product list of objects with us and we need to transform it to something like this. However, there are some more fields to it. Let's understand them first. So I have written this script over here, which basically converts the data in our products data.json into a JSON-L file like this. So it creates two files for both our use cases. If you remember, the first use case was to evaluate whether the product is correctly mapped to its category or not. So this is a real life example on which I actually worked on where I had to determine whether the categories associated with the product is mapped correctly or not. Now, 
somebody could do it manually, but when you have like millions of SKUs or products in your catalog, doing it manually is extremely cumbersome, time taking and also error prone in nature. So I had to do something very similar like this, where I use GPT-40 mini basically to predict whether the categories is correctly mapped to the product or not. So let's look at the script first. So first use case evaluating whether the category is mapped to the product correctly or not. We are creating one file for that. And the second use case, if you remember, was to embed all of this data. Now, embedding is particularly helpful if you want to apply semantic search on top of it. So let's see what this function is trying to do. So initially, we are reading our data from productdata.json and we are passing it to this function, our data, and we are also telling it what file name should it create. Let's have a look at what it's doing. So it's creating an object on every single line. Let's go through the fields of this object one by one. So number one is custom ID and it's a mandatory field and its value has to be unique throughout. This is because so that later on when you get the output, you can map it through custom ID itself. The method of the API, which is post in this case and the URL of the API, we'll be using even chat completions. And then the body where we tell basically which model we want to use and then the message itself. So for the system role, we have defined this prompt, which is basically I'm asking the LLM to assume the role of a category manager of an e-commerce company based in India and they are tasked to cleaning up product categorization. And I have passed in certain instructions in terms of what the input data would look like and what output it should give me. Notice that I'm asking GPT-40 when you to tag whether the product category mapped is correct or incorrect. And I'm also asking it to return a confidence score. This is model's confidence on how correct its prediction is. And then for the user role, I'm dumping product ID, name, description and category. So basically what it will do is it will take product name and product description into consideration and determine whether the category it is mapped to is correct or not. And it will also return a confidence score of its prediction. When all of this data is formed, it will be dumped into the file name that we passed in as a parameter and it will be written to that file. Secondly, moving forward for the embedding use case, I'm passing the same data to this another function. And I'm also telling it what is the file name that it should create. Within this function, if you see that we are doing the same thing, except we don't have a complicated body this time. All we are saying is that the custom ID is the product ID, method is get, URL is v1 embeddings, and within the body, I'm saying that use text embedding three small model, and the input is basically a concatenation of product name and the product description itself. Dumping everything and writing it to a file called productsdataembedding.json. Let's have a look at these files once. So this is a file that was created for evaluation. If you notice, we have our system prompt over here and our user prompt over here. So basically it contains the product ID, name, uh, it should also have description and category. Let's look at the JSON lines file for the embedding use case. If you see, it is similar where custom ID is the product ID. We have a method, URL, body, which has a model, and then the input itself, which is, as I said, is the concatenation of product name and description. Great. So we have now our JSON L files ready. Let's move ahead. There are no limits for output tokens or number of submitted requests for the batch API today. Because batch API rate limits are a new separate pool, using the batch API will not consume the tokens from your standard per model rate limits, thereby offering you a convenient way to increase the number of requests when querying your API. There are, however, two constraints. Number one is that you cannot send more than 50,000 requests in one single file. And number two being, that each file cannot be more than 200 MBs in size. Okay, now let's switch to the OpenAI dashboard to see how we can input these files to the batch API. So I've logged into my OpenAI dashboard. As you can see here on the left, you have an option called batches. Just have to go there. As you can see, I have no batches right now. I'll create a new one. Since I had already created my .jsonl file, I'll upload it. This one is for the evaluation using GPT-40 mini. 
I'll select the completion window as 24 hours because that's the only option you have. And then the endpoint should be V1 chat completions. I'll create this patch. As you can see, it is in progress right now. I have 20 records to be processed. I will actually have to make a correction. The embeddings API is a post API and not a get API. And run the script again to create the files. Let me check again. Yes, it becomes post now. Now we can use this file. I'll repeat the process for the embedding use case. I'll upload the file that was generated. Completion window remains 24 hours. However, the endpoint now changes to V1 embeddings. I'll create the batch. And as you can see, it is validating now. And it has started progressing. While the files uploaded via the dashboards are processing, let's have a look at how we can do this programmatically as well. So I've written this script. The first thing that we need is an OpenAI API key. Let's look quickly, create a new API key. I'll name it my test key and I'll select the default project and I'll hit create secret key. It will create the key and I should copy this because I'll not be able to see this again. I'll paste it in the .env file of my project. And now the OpenAI key should be accessible. However, let's go through the code first. So what I'm doing in this script is I'm doing two things. Number one is that I'm uploading these files. So I'm uploading the file products data evaluation.json.l and products data embedding.json.l just in case you guys forgot. This is how the evaluation json.l files look like. And this is how the embedding json.l file look like. So I'm uploading both of them. Uh, OpenAI provides a very intuitive way of uploading these files where you upload them using an API called files and it will return you with the unique ID of that file. So both these files are uploaded. I got the IDs and I'm printing them over here. And then what I'm trying to do is create a batch against these file IDs. So for creating a batch, I'm passing the file ID that was returned to me by OpenAI and also for which endpoint I need to create this batch for. Let's have a look at what this function is doing. It is using the batches API and in the payload, it is configuring three fields, the input file ID, the endpoint that we provided and the completion window, which has to be 24 hours. And then the response is returned as a JSON. Each batch will also have a corresponding ID to it. And then I'm printing those IDs over here. Great. So we got our file IDs and our batch IDs. I'll copy this into a new file for now. If I look at my dashboard, I can see that two new batches have started executing. Wonderful. While the batches are executing, I have written one more script, which is to get the status of each batch. So basically, this script will try to get the status of each batch. And to get the status of each batch, what it will do is it will use the batches API along with a path variable of batch ID. And it will return us the JSON response that it receives. Upon receiving the status, we are printing it. And if both the statuses are completed, we are then progressing and using the content API to fetch the contents of each output file. Since we have the batch IDs, let's check the status for each batch ID. Great. So as we can see that evaluation batch is still in progress. However, the embeddings batch is completed. I will let the evaluation batch complete as well. So I'm back on my OpenAI dashboard. And as I can see, all my batches have completed their execution. The last and the third last one were the ones that I uploaded through the dashboard itself. The last one, which was basically for inference using the V1 chat completions API, as you can see, it has completed in 22 minutes. And here is the output file. We can download this. This is how the downloaded file look like. Each request has a response code of 200, which is good. Let's have a look at the response body itself. So we instructed LLM to return us the category name, the product ID, product name, tagging, and a confidence score. So as you can see, for row number one, it says that the tagging is correct with a confidence of 0 0.95, which is a very high confidence score. Whereas in for the second row, you can see that the tagging is incorrect. Let's have a look at it. The product is Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones. 
and the category it belongs to furniture. Of course, this tagging seems accurate to me now. Of course, Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones is not a furniture. Therefore, this tagging is accurate, which is also reflective in the confidence score that it has returned. A very high confidence score of 0 0.95. Let's look at the embeddings file. It uses V1 embeddings API and it took only about 14 seconds. So one thing that we can notice is that even though OpenAI says that the completion window is 24 hours, the actual completion time is much, much less. Anyhow, it took about 14 seconds to execute. And this is the output file. Again, we can download it from here and view it in an editor. As we can see, this is how the embedding output file look like. These are the embeddings. We are using text embedding 3 small model which operates on 1536 dimensions. So these should be 1536 coordinates which basically seems correct. Now let's also look at the batches that we created through programmatic access. So we created these batches and let's run this script again. As you can see both the batches have now completed and the results, the contents of the output file has been saved into these files. So let's have a look at these files. First, we'll look at evaluation results.json-l and this will look very similar to the file that we downloaded from dashboard. So, of course, Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones does not belong to furniture and that's why the tagging is incorrect. Absolutely right. Let's have a look at the embedding results.json. This would look very similar to the embedding file that we downloaded. Again, it's almost identical. So this seems absolutely correct as well. So this is how you operate batch API, both from the dashboard itself and programmatically. And there you have it. A complete walkthrough of using OpenAI's batch API for both inference and embedding generation. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe to stay updated with more practical AI. Leave your questions and comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.